Hi, welcome back to McClatchy Maths. My name is Natalie McClatchy and today we're continuing our series on time series and learning how to smooth data. This is aimed at students in Grade 12 in Queensland and Western Australia and also in Tasmania in Grade 11. In this particular video, I'm going to take you through a few different concepts. I'm going to firstly explain what smoothing is and why we use that in statistics. We're going to look at what a moving average is. We're going to focus on three point and five point moving averages as well as even numbered moving averages and centering. So firstly, let's talk about what smoothing is and why would we use this in statistics at all? Why not just use the raw data? Well, smoothing is a process where we remove irregular fluctuations. So that's all where data goes up and down and that random variation from a time series in order so that we can look at overall trends. Because if all that you can see is spikes up, spikes down and data going up and down all over the place, it's very hard to see if there's a trend of increase or a trend of decrease. So smoothing helps to eliminate some of that randomness and those irregular fluctuations and then we can see what's going on overall. So here's an example with the black data, that's the raw data, you can see there's a lot of big spikes and a lot of big spikes up and down. But when that data has been smoothed, you'll notice that it looks like a much smoother curve with the red data. And that's showing you that overall that trend started increasing, but then over time it's actually flattened out and there's no real growth or decline at all. But it's very hard to tell that just looking at those black spikes. There are many techniques. So the techniques that we're looking in this particular video are not the only techniques. There are many techniques right through to a university and corporate level that people use to smooth their data sets. So these are the focus for our videos and it comes straight from your syllabus. We're focusing on those simple moving averages. Now I'm not gonna be doing it using spreadsheets um, to implement the process. Um, that's only one way that you can do the process. You can also do it manually and that's what you're going to be tested on in an exam. So that's why I'm going to show you how to do that one today. But those are simple moving averages. So nothing too complicated. So firstly, you might be asking, well, what is a moving average? It's a series of calculations. You should know what an average is. That's when we find the mean of something. We add up all the values and divide it by how many values there are. Well, with a moving average, you do that over and over and over again, where you take a small set of your big data set, you take an average, and then you keep moving that average on, and then you that's what we use to smooth the data and find out those underlying trends. Now this might be a little bit, ugh, I don't know what she's talking about. Once you see it with the worked example, it'll make a lot more sense. So here we could see another example where someone has used a seven day moving average on COVID-19 deaths in Florida. So you can see that there's these big changes from day to day. It's hard to see what the trend is. That's that underlying light blue line with the raw data. But once it's been smoothed out, it sort of sits like you would expect an average to do around the middle. It hovers around that middle and that's a seven point moving average that they're using there. And you can see that while there was an initial growth in those deaths, it did flatten out and started to decline a little bit and then it started to grow a little bit towards the end in that last couple of weeks. Okay, moving averages. You might be wondering, when am I gonna use that in real life? People ask me this one all the time and I say, what, you're not in real life? Isn't maths real life? High school's real life for a lot of people. Okay, but when you actually get a career, you may be involved in using moving averages. Often people in the stock market use that where they will compare an average share price over time as time is progressing along. And they use different um, types of moving averages to compare the data with different techniques to try and make predictions of where that share price is going next. Because obviously if you can predict when the share price is going to drop, you're going to sell before that happens. Or if you can predict that a share price is going to increase, you're going to buy and get in before it gets too expensive. So people who analyze the stock market use moving averages a lot. Okay, let's look at our worked example. Looks like a lot of data there. We're going to calculate the three point moving average for shop A and their soft drink sales in 2019. So we don't actually have to think too greatly about what's going on in that particular one. Once we've done a, a moving average, things will become more apparent. So firstly, we're gonna add another row. We need some space to calculate that moving average. So that's our three point moving average row right there. That's where our data is going to go. Now you should know how to calculate an average. We did talk about that just briefly. So you're gonna write the formula. 
x bar with that bar on the top means the mean is equal to um, that symbol there that looks like an e is the sum of all the x values that's what the x with the subscript means divided by how many values you're looking at so with the three point moving average n is always going to equal three so another way you could write your formula if you don't remember the first one using all the algebra is just to write sum of all scores divided by the number of scores either way is acceptable so firstly we're going to calculate the average of our very first three values that's these guys here and we're going to place that in the middle of that um, middle value which is February we're going to put it right under February in there so that's where that moving average is going to be once we've calculated it so I'm going to add those three numbers up divide it by three and I end up with 602.67 so I've calculated my first moving average of three of the points now I'm going to move along and do it for the next three data values so I'm going to take the average of them that first value is no longer included so I've got a new value there that's 552 and then we're going to move along again and repeat so we just keep moving each time along to the right and putting in the value of the third average and so we're going to move along and along and then fill out all the spaces you'll notice that the first column where, where january is and the last column where december is there's no information there because you couldn't calculate a three point moving average of just january and february because that would only be a two point average and the same for November and December. So it has to be three values. And that's why when you are calculating a three point moving average, you don't have to do as many as there are data points. Now let's have a little quick comparison as to what this has done to smooth our data. Here's our original data shown on the left hand side in blue. And once we've smoothed that, the um, orange data is our three point moving average. You can see that there aren't as many little hiccups along the road. It's a fairly smooth graph as the name implies. And what that shows us is that um, right through the year, from January through to July, there's this constant decline. And then from July to December, there's pretty much constant increase. And you would expect that with the sale of soft drinks that you would sell more in the summertime when people are hot and thirsty and a lot less soft drinks in the winter when people are drinking hotter drinks. Now, you probably could have inferred that from the raw data because it wasn't all of that irregular fluctuations, but this is a good example of how smoothing works. Okay, we're gonna do a second example now with a five point moving average. And you can probably guess already that five is gonna be your value for N and it's gonna sit on the denominator. So like with our previous steps, our first step is to add another row. So let's put there and make some room for that five point moving average. And then we're gonna calculate the average of the first five values and put that in the middle under that middle value. Now the third month, March, will be our middle value there. So that's where we're gonna place our answer for the five point moving average. So we're gonna write our formula again, substitute into the formula, and we find that our first value is 521.2. We're gonna repeat that all the way along like we did before. So once again, here, we're moving along the next set of five values. We're going to calculate that and we're going to put the answer in there and so on all the way along. And once again, with a five point moving average, not every um, part of the row is going to be filled. We can't do January because if we were to do a five point moving average of January with January as the middle number, then that would actually only be three points. And same for February, that would only be four points. So those last two rows and the first two rows are always left out. Now you might be wondering, how much working do you need to show to fill out one of these tables if you're in an exam? Now you're going to need to check the answer for that question with your teacher because te different teachers expect different things at different schools. At my particular school, we're only expecting a sample calculation. So you would write there, sample calculation and do it properly. Write the formula first, substitute into the formula, evaluate in a couple of steps using your calculator and write a final answer. You wouldn't need to repeat that in this case, how many is that? Eight times, that would be kind of ridiculous amount of working. A good guide as well is how much space are you given under your table to show all of your working? And also how many marks have been allocated to the question? Because if the marks that have been allocated is maybe one mark or two marks, you know that they're not expecting working for every single value. Okay, so let's have a look at what that looks like when we graph one versus the other. So that dark blue line there is my raw data. And then I've got the orange value is that three point moving average. You can see that smoothed it out a little bit. If we go back, see, a bit jaggedy, smoother. 
And now the five point moving average shown in green is even smoother again with that curve. So it really does flatten things out a little bit and take off all the edges when you are using bigger five point moving averages versus a three point moving average. Now it's time for our third example. We're going to use a four point moving average this time with something called centering. Now that's a little bit different. So it's important that you do read your question carefully because if you're asked for a centered moving average, it's different to just a plain moving average. Let me show you what I mean by that. Let's start firstly with that extra row. Now these times, we're, because we've got an even number four, well, there's no middle number as such. When we did three, for example, January, February, March, our middle value was February. But if we're going to be doing fourth, January, February, March, April, well, there's no real middle there. It's somewhere between February and March. And that's where we put our answer for the four point moving average between those two numbers. That's why you'll notice that this row now is offset between those two. Okay, so the first average that we're going to be putting in there is January, February, March and April that goes in and we're going to continue all the way along and fill out all of the values. I'm not going to repeat and waste your time and show you how to do that. It's the same process. You're calculating an average. Now that's the four point moving average, but it's not the four point centered moving average. Centering involves taking an average of an average. Okay, so that's really smoothing things out now. So that's important to notice that if you see that word centered, that means you're going to be taking a second lot of averages. So these ones here are actually going to be average. We've done the first four, and then now we're going to take an average of those two numbers in the middle. So we need to add yet another row. So it's always important that you've got the space to do this when you do your calculations. So these ones are going to be written in between the previous averages. So it's important to note that when you do a four point centered moving average, you're taking the first four points initially, finding a number in between there, and then it's only the next two values. You're not taking the four values and averaging those again. It's just two this time, averaging each of those averages along. So we're going to take the average of the first two here and put the answer underneath, and then we do the next two, and then so on all the way through. It is tedious, I agree. It's tedious and time consuming. And typically what I'm seeing in Queensland is that these um, kinds of questions that involve three point and four point moving averages are typically going to be something you'll see maybe on paper two in your external exam. If you're in Western Australia, it's definitely going to be on a calculator exam. I don't think anyone will be expecting you to do this manually by hand. But in Queensland, I reckon it'll probably go on paper two simply because of the amount of work that's involved to complete one of these questions. Complex doesn't necessarily just mean it's hard. Complex can mean that there's a lot of steps involved. And you can see for a four point centered moving average, there's more steps than just taking a couple of averages. So this is our process for when we're using even moving, even numbered moving averages and for centering. So you can do six point moving averages. You could do 10 point moving averages with a lot of data. You'd be better off using a spreadsheet for something like that. That would be very, very time consuming. Well, this is all we've got time for today and I bet you, you are relieved that there's not much more to it than just that. In our upcoming videos, we're gonna look at seasonal indices and how to de-seasonalize data, which is another way to smooth data. We're gonna also focus on some complex questions from past exams. And if you're wanting to find out when these videos are available, best thing to do is to hit that notifications button. And I'd like to shout out to all of those new subscribers this month that have joined us at McClutchy Maths, welcome. And please do join us here at the channel or follow us on Facebook to find out more about when our new videos are released. Have a wonderful day.